turn your spreadsheets into visual databases. Let's discover Grist, a free open source platform to turn raw spreadsheet data into graphs and forms for easy data collaboration, including advanced visualization tools, access rules, and customization features. To start using Grist, you can use their cloud version starting for free, up to 5,000 records, or $8 per user per month, up to 100,000 records per document or you can self-deploy it by following their self-hosted guide on their documentation. Or you can use a platform like ours, Elestio, to deploy it seamlessly on your server or the cloud provider of your choice. We handle the installation, backups, updates, and ongoing maintenance for you. To install Grist with our platform, head to ls.io and click on Login. Then deploy my first service, search for Grist, and select. Choose between the different cloud providers, regions and service plans based on your needs, and then next. Adjust more advanced configuration and choose your level of support. The first one is free and included by default, and once everything is ready, hit the create service button. Once the installation is finished, you will receive this email. Follow the click here to get the password link. You arrive on Elestio administration dashboard for your Grist instance. Copy the password to your clipboard and follow the link. Choose a login with email. Type your email and paste the password from your clipboard, then login. We land on Grist dashboard because this is our first time and we don't have any document yet. We have a three minute video tour. You can watch it. It's a good getting started guide, but because this is what we will do in this video, you can skip it for now. But know that in their documentation, they have a bunch of how-to tutorials. The main feature of Grist is to turn a spreadsheet into a database. You can start from a blank document, which is like if you start a new spreadsheet, or import a file. If you have existing data in a spreadsheet, it's the ideal way to do it. If you don't have any, and like me, you are looking for some inspiration, they provide a list of templates available. Let's check investment spreadsheet template. You have explanation about what it is and how it works, plus a live preview. Here it's working correctly. If you want to open the full template, it will open a Grist instance, including all the different things. But unfortunately, if you want to use this template, you will need to use the cloud version. So us, we won't be able to just copy a template and use it inside our instance, but we still can extract the data and recreate some of the features. Let's go to raw data. We can choose companies, open it. You have all the raw data of the companies and on the top right, download as XLSX. Okay, so we have successfully stole the data. Now we can import file open it and we have successfully imported our data into Grist. So for now it's just a classical table view, but now it's here we can do much more. Let's click on add new, add a page. So we start from an empty page. Let's say we want to display the data into a chart using the company's data. So you can have multiple documents imported, multiple tables add page and you have this ugly chart generated because it has a lot of lines and it's not set up correctly. So on the top right, let's edit it. Where is it? Widget options. First, the chart type, we want a pie chart. The label, because we want to group things together to show something, let's use the category code. And now we are learning something from our data. We have 11.8% of companies that belong to advertising. Analytics is two point something and so on. Very easy to generate charts from your data. You can adjust some parameters, add some sort and filters and edit how the data is selected. But remember, we created a page. So let's name it um, companies dashboard for the big picture about our data. Here, inside it, we want to add a widget to our page. Let's select card list, still about our companies. And now on the right, we have the list of our companies, but in a card format instead of a table. You can adjust 
the way it is displayed. You can choose compact or blocks. Then which fields are visible or not. Let's say, okay, I just want the name and founding total and category. Height fields, oh, it was the opposite, sorry. So select all height fields and do the opposite. A name, category, and founding total, show fields. And now we have only this information for each company. Let's say you want them to be one line, edit card layout. You can take one, put it as a column, save layout. And here you have one line per company. And again, you can adjust the sort and filter for this widget. You also have settings per field. So first for the name, you can decide how you want to display it. Markdown, hyperlink, but it's not really a link. Choose the style and really customize the appearance here. All right, let's discover other types of widgets. Inside a new page, we will use a calendar based on the companies and add our page. Let's name it founding calendar. And first we need to map some data so it's available to process it to generate uh, an actual calendar. So let's go to the settings of our calendar in the widget. Start dates we can use. So it's detecting which one are actually dates. Found it at. Found it at. So we use the same start and end date. And for the title, we can say we want the name of the company. Now what you can see is that it automatically went to September 2007 because I guess there is data here. So there are three founded companies. The first, there are these two. Here there is another one. Then you have this. Then I guess oh, it was the last latest ones because we have other companies created in the past. And then in addition to visualize data, you can create data using forms. Let's create a new table. Let's call it members create. Let's name it members form. And you can see you have a form title, uh, member page submission. Then you can edit the different text. Please type your details. Then again, a description, thank you. And you have three fields set by default, A, B, and C. Let's say first name, last name, and job title. And let's use it. Let's say we publish it. Okay, don't show again, publish. Once published, it's public and anyone can visit it. So let's use view. And let's fill the form. John, Doe, and CEO, submit. Thank you, your response has been recorded. Then a nice link to redirect them to Grist. All right, so now we have someone who submitted it. We could add a view to see it, but instead let's go to raw data and discover the members table that has been created automatically when we created our form. But what you can see is we renamed uh, the input forms to first name, last name, and job title, but here it's A, B, and C because we only renamed the input field and not the data field. And to edit it, click on the field and rename it. Last name and title. And now it is properly saved inside the data. It will now be first name, last name, title. And then to manage your data the best way possible, you have access rules. You have a few rules set by default. When a user is an editor or an owner, they have read, update, create, and delete permission. Viewers, they have read permission, but maybe you want viewer to be able to do nothing and to cancel the permissions. And everyone else, maybe you want to give the read uh, possibility, so you would edit it. Here it is generic for all the instance, but you can add table rules, let's say on members, I want specific rules, or on companies, I'm able to specify the rules with very accurate control. If we go to document history, 
it opened this panel showing you all the details of who did what to know precisely who adjusted the data, who changes the views and so on. It's a bit raw because it's showing some data that is proprietary to Grist, but still it can help you diagnose what happened. If we go back to the home page, we are inside the home workspace, it's where we worked. But if we go inside admin panel, unfortunately, adding users manually, creating organizations and workspace are only for paid plans. So to add users in the email you receive from Elestio, you have instruction on how to add manually new users into your instance. Follow the steps and you will be able to collaborate with your team using Grist. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering Grist with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. If you want to continue your open source journey, watch this video available here.